I, I okay. thought it was I thought it was a pretty good story up until the the major plot twist. Then it kind of fell apart for me. Yeah, I didn't like how the game was trying to actively frame that one guy. I don't want to give it away with who, mm. with anything, yeah. in case anyone hasn't played it. But there's one character in the game that it seems like the game is going to have its way to frame by hiding all sorts of incriminating evidence in his pockets without explaining mm. why the mm. evidence is in his pockets. Mm. Or he just wakes up randomly at the murder site. Yeah. yeah that, that was a bit of a, um, that was a bit of a plot hole. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, things like that just bother me for some reason. Okay, maybe it wasn't a very good story. Maybe I... <laughs> My I, I did kind of get the impression that the developers weren't sure who the bad guy was going to be until they got to the <laughs> point where they started developing it. Yeah. It was a pretty... And, well, Vandy mentioned it was an intense game, and I, I agree with her. Well, it was, and that, another thing that sort of bothered me about that game is that they make this big thing that, like, while anything you do affects the outcome, like every choice you make has an effect. But, um, for example, there's that one scene where um, the, the cop characters with his... Um, partner and the partner starts beating up the psychologist guy and you can either stop him or you can let him beat him up but regardless of what you do the ending to the scene is exactly the same and there's no effect in the game other than one line in the next scene between the two of them like so even though it says there's all these significant effects you can have um, none of them really panned out to anything but you don't know what Vandy has made the point you don't know what that's going to be so I mean it, it's I, I suppose that maybe you're not, that's not a game you're supposed to go back and play through because the first time through it's like wow there's look at all Actually, these different uh, possibilities and I play point, through it again and I'm like I well, think I recall there, I'm sorry to cut you off I think I recall there being an interview with the developer who, who I think he said that you he doesn't want people to play it a second time he <laughs> wants the story that you they realize yeah. how linear it is <laughs> <laughs> he said that um and I I think I remember this correctly he said that he wants the story that you play through initially to be the story for you for that game. He's, thought you'd get the best experience that way. I, I, don't, I, I thought Heavy Rain had a really good atmosphere. I'd go. I'd say that. Like I thought the atmosphere in Heavy Rain was really nicely done. But, um, yeah. Beyond that, there uh, was. What other, what other games? Yeah. So Heavy Rain, a great game, except we didn't like the gameplay or the story. <laughs> well, what? No, no. What I, about Two Worlds? <laughs> Amazing I I facial hair, was... terrible dialogue, and grammar. <laughs> Everything and else. But so terrible. I had to, that it's like borderline amazing. Definitely did. Uh-huh. It was voice actors and that and, and the things <laughs> they were saying. It was so bad. Such a bad game in every way. <laughs> yeah, but like, I, I had, had, like I had kind of an enchanted arms effect where I liked oh. it because it was so bad. Uh, enchanted arms was so bad it was terrible. Like it's not even <laughs> the so bad it was a good thing. Like. No, no, Enchanted oh. Arms is one of the greatest games of this console generation. No, I, I, I can't abide by that comment, Paul. But... <laughs> they can put that on the box of the Game of the Year edition if they want. <laughs> I still of... love the one plot twist that the, the, the one gay character, very early in the game, he dies. Or you think he dies. But then he comes back at the end as the really tough guy that's been there the entire time. Yeah, You're you ruining like, it for me. Well, I'm doing what you a favor. <laughs> and, and, th- and then everyone's like, why didn't you tell us you were alive? And he was like, well, I, but I couldn't be tough if I was gay or something like that. I was like, this is the most offensive plot twist ever. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Wait, I only played the first ten minutes. You mean this game gets more offensive to gays? <laughs> it does. Wait, what, what game is this? <laughs> Enchanted Arms. Uh-huh. Okay. It, it, why is it Brad is burning bad. copies of this? It's a game about <laughs> literal <laughs> Enchanted <laughs> Arms. <laughs> The the gameplay in that game wasn't terrible, if I remember correctly. Yeah. It's like green like, based a- RPG turn based stuff. Yeah, it wasn't great, but I was able to get through it at least. I wasn't. I listened to offended. other people's podcasts while I played it. <laughs> I played it. I absolutely played that game for the story and nothing else, and the one well, the dialogue. I don't know about you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, this is why nobody should ever buy something because I say it's good. <laughs> That's what makes me a great video game journalist. <laughs> <laughs> you can really trust me. Welcome to Game Cola. Best game of this generation. <laughs> <laughs> well, not I really the can't pick of too many games that fall into this category. Really, I like I straight up hate a game, or I can you know I like it somewhat. Um, I'm sure there's examples of games with like awful graphics that are fun despite that. Um, I mean, uh, I, I bring this one up a lot. Final Fantasy VII. 
<laughs> I just hate Final Fantasy VII all around. This is a hateful podcast. Well, I mean, like I was playing uh, Tactics Ogre recently <laughs> uh, for the PSP, the re-release. That one's really good, except it gets to the point where you just have to grind. I hate games where you just have to grind and grind and grind. Like, you yeah. can do pretty well for a while, but, you know, midway through the game, it's like, okay, now the enemies are, like, double your level. Time to start grinding. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> it's fun. Oh. Super duper fun. Uh, the, the only thing I can think of is, uh, I'm not sure if anyone's played Banjo and Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Yeah, I'd, say that. that's a, I'd say that's a good game, except for the controls, because it always controls like Banjo is intoxicated as you're trying to drive around the car. Also, it's really buggy because I found... I don't remember exactly what yeah. the bug was, but I figured out how to surf in the sky on random pieces of wood, and I got to, like, the last level <laughs> when I was just starting the game. Uh, it was maybe you would like to, like to say Grim Fandango. Because this is about... The, it's, it's, you know, really great story and everything like that, but it's at that point where LucasArts switched, like, to the, um, uh, like the Monkey Island... Four oh. style of controlling, like where you have oh, like the Amen. adventure point and click game. It yeah. just doesn't control very well. I didn't know where you were going with that, but yes, I absolutely <laughs> agree. The control is terrible. Yep. Same thing can be said for Tales of Monkey Island. Yeah. And all of Telltale's games since Tales of Monkey Island. <laughs>